say we want to do a multiplication of the type 0.13333 indefinitely multiplied with 0.6666 again a recurring number and I want an exact answer there need not there should not be any approximation so for example a few people will say oh the threes are indefinite we cannot handle it so let's just take two threes and let's just take two sixes right there is an approximation and in fact that approximation ruins the calculation right it ruins the beauty of the answer and we are going to get a more difficult uh, we are going to make it more difficult for us. The accurate way to do this is to convert this recurring number to a p by q form. We have just seen that every recurring number is a rational and because it's rational can be expressed as a p by q form. That is what is what we are going to learn right now. We started our recurring number by this very commonly encountered number 0.333333 and it goes on right. The part that recurs whatever block we usually represent it as a 0.3 bar. We put a bar over the part which recurs. And we have seen that this number in a recurring form is nothing but 1 by 3. Let me just put it in a little space. I'll tell you why. Uh, this is a processed answer. The way to convert a recurring number to a p by q form is if there's a single digit that recurs, that digit divided by 9 is going to be the recurring, uh, the p by q form. And it works always. So, for example, if I have a 0.4545, this is also a number that I had written out when in the number tree. Okay, 0.4545 and so on. Now, I would put the bar over the two digits 45. Why? Because the entire 45 is being recurring, right? And the way to convert it to a p by q form is the two, there are two digits which recur. So put it once, write that part just once. And since it is two digits, divide by a 99. You can later reduce it if you want. That is a processed answer. But then the answer is 45 by 99. And what if I had a 125, 125, 125, Recurring process remains same to represent it. I would put a bar over the 125 or the block of 125 is repeating. So write that block 125 once it has three digits. So divided by 999. This cannot be reduced. So this is your final answer out of here, right? Uh, that's the way you convert it. It's a pretty easy one. So one number here that you can easily convert it. This is a 0 0.666666. So this is nothing going to be but just 6 by 9. And 6 by 9 is nothing but 2 thirds. Right? And if you spend a little moment thinking, you know one third was 0.3333. You would have encountered this somewhere or the other one third. And 2 thirds is 0.6666. This is also a number that is used very often. Right? So that is how you handle the recurring part. Right? But our work is not done. Two parts remain. One, why does this work? And you should know that. Yeah, it should, it's not a good idea to just mug it up, right? So if I represent this number 0.3333, which goes on indefinitely as an x, this part that goes on indefinitely is what is creating the problem. So that one unit, whatever occurs, I take it before the decimal part. How do I do it? I multiply both sides by 10. So I would get a 3.333 3, 3 3 and the decimal part will be recurring again, right? This decimal part and this part both are identical. So how do I get rid of it? That is what creates the problem. I subtract it, right? So 10x minus 9x, uh, x is 9x, 3 minus this will remain 3. So which gives me x is equal to 3 by 9. That is what we had 1, 9, right? What if I have uh, the next y is let's say 0.45, 45, 45, 45 and so on. Remember if you do a 10y, I would be getting the decimal part will change now. In the above one, it was 45, 45. Here it's 54, 54. It's not going to help me too much, right? So it doesn't make sense. Take out the entire block so that the recurring part remains same. So when I multiply it with a 100y, I will be getting a 45.454545 and since both the recurring parts are identical in the first and the third, I subtract them 100y minus y is a 99y which will give me a 45. The decimal part uh, cancels out so I will be getting a y is equal to 45 by 
99. I leave it for you to do this 0.1255. Going ahead, if there is an integral part to it, that is not at all a problem. So if I have a 1.3333, this is not a problem at all. The integral part can always be separated and the decimal part can always be separated. And then I can easily process it. Oh, I know 0 0.1, 0 0.333 is nothing but one third. So now do your addition, which is nothing but four by three. So integral part doesn't create a problem. However, things are a little different when there is a part of the decimal that does not recur. For example, let's say this number 0.25555 uh, and so on. So here, uh, there is a part after the decimal that does not recur, right? So, uh, separating it out, let's say as a point. 2 plus 0 0.05555 is not going to help us too much, right? Because that, that problem still remains out over here. So how can I handle it? Well, you have done the process. So we, it's, it is doable, not that it can't. This is creating a problem. So let's get this before the decimal place. How do I get that? By multiplying it with a power of 10. So I multiply it with a 10x. And 10x is 2.5555. And I know 0.5555. Now it is a or everything after the decimal place is recurring. So I could simply put it as a 2 plus 0.55. And I do not have the same problem as earlier. So this could be a 2 plus 5 by 9. 18, 18 by and 23 by 9. But remember 23 by 9 is 10x. So what this tells us is the x, the number that we had original begun with is nothing but 23 by 90. This whole work is being done because we do not like to give anything as a ready-made answer. But then we Indians are very good at reverse engineering. So you should be able to reverse engineer all this and write the answer in one shot. And how do you write the answer in one shot? This number that you see has a part which does not recur and has a part which recurs, right? The one that a bar is put. Now the bar is not over two because two is not recurring. So the way to write it as a P by Q form directly is what does not recur, what recurs, put it once, subtract what does not recur. As many nines as in the digits that recur, since there's only a five, there's a single digit which recurs, so one nine. Put a zero, append a zero, as many zeros as digits that do not recur. So there's only a single digit, the digit two that does not recur, so that is zero, 25 minus two, that is a 23 by 90. Hope you see this is going to be same, right? So you should be able to reverse it, engineer it and write it. Let's just do a few examples to highlight it. What if my number is, let's say, 0 0.21555. 5, 5, 5, 5. Right? So, I write this number as 0 0.21 is the part that does not recur and 5 is what is recurring. So, I put it a 215. The recurring part is written just once. Subtract the Break it into two parts. Yeah, the non-recurring, the recurring. Subtract the non-recurring part divided by how many digits recur? One. So put a nine. How many digits do not recur? Two. So put two zeros. Right? That two zero comes because we'll have to multiply it with a hundred. Twenty-one to get twenty-one outside. Right? So the answer is going to be okay. Fifteen and six left. One ninety-four by nine hundred. Right? Last example, just changing this. What if it was a point two one five one five one five? So same. So so point two and one five recurs. So break it into two distinct part. Write it as the recurring part just once. The whole number. Subtract the non-recurring part. This is a place where errors happen. So please be careful. How many digits? Recur 2. So there are two nines. How many digits do not recur? Single. So that's it. So the answer is 213 by 990. Hope you have got the example. 
the exercise would have quite a few questions like this and what I'm giving you away the clue right away. What we are going to try to make you, uh, trick you with is giving you zeros out in between. So I'm not doing an example here. You just take some numbers with a zero and do it yourself. Don't treat zero separately. Just go ahead and treat it as just any other digit. If there is a zero in the end, it has some importance. If there is a zero a beginning of any number, it has no importance. It will, should be on your own, right? Let's finish it off with the example that we just started. So, this number is going to be 13 minus 1 by 3 is recurring. So, that is 0. 1 is not recurring. That is 0. So, this is going to be a 12 by 90. And the 12 by 90 can be reduced uh, by 3 and by 6. 6 twos are 6, 15. 2 by 50. So, if I look at those numbers, the, the work that is given to me is just to do 2 by 15 into 2 by 3. And the answer is 4 by 45. Right? Now, you might argue that 4 by 45 is in a fractional form. You want to write it that way. You will never have to do the reverse process. But if you see a 45, right? The advantage of doing this whole process is the denominators are always multiples of 9. Right? 9, 90 with zeros. Not multiples. Not every multiple. Either 9 and a few zeros or a series of 9. So, can I make this number as same as 8 by 90? For a minute, ignore the 0. What is 8 by 9? Do you know 8 by 9 is 0 0.888888 and so on? 8 by 90 is just going to be a 0 is going to be I did, 0 0.0888. This is what I was referring to that the answer is going to be in a beautiful format provided you don't approximate anything. right? So, this is what we had converting a recurring number to a p by q form. right? Uh, there have been questions in CAD, not that they are totally absent, but they are very, very few. I will just do one of them. 